that uh, regarding the dissolution of Move Forward Party. Explain what's in the competition bill and why it's going to be the first economy-related priority. Both of you, I think, could be banned for life, right? You, you, um, you even ready when, uh, when the worst scenarios has come. Alice, um, I was wondering whether you could expand on that. I mean, the Constitutional Court has clearly made it a red line, so how are you going to go forward with it? Thank you. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondent Club of Thailand. My name is Panu Wong Um. I'm the Senior Correspondent for Reuters and the Vice President of the FCCT. Welcome to a very special evening uh, today where we are going to be meeting with um, two key figures in the new People's Party, the Opposition People's Party. Of course, you know, Thailand has disbanded the Move Forward Party last month and they regrouped into this new political vehicle, the People's Party, uh, after it was dissolved by the Constitutional Court. Mm -hmm. Under this new leadership, Kunatapong Heng Rung Panyawut, who's only 37, one of the youngest political leader in the country, the party has vowed to carry on its mission in parliament to push for major reforms in Thai politics. This includes amending military drafted constitution and push, push forward many liberal agendas uh, that Move Forward has previously proposed, winning them the most parliamentary seat in the last general election. Since the dissolution, Thailand has also seen the dismissal of former Premier Seth Tha Thuy Sin by the same court for ethics violation. A parliamentary vote has elected an Pa Tong Tan Shinawat as the country's youngest prime minister. And of course, the rest is history. We know now where we are today. So we want to really hear from the People's Party about um, their agenda, their work, and you know, how they see the current Thai political landscape. So without further ado, I want to invite Kun Natapong or Kun Teng to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Kun Panu. Thank you, Kun Panu. Thank you, everyone. That all gathered to be here tonight, and thank to FCCT to uh, invite me and Kun Silikanya to this forum. Um, despite many people say to me now today that congrats to me as a party leader, but uh, I still disappoint to the Constitutional Court verdict that uh, regarding the dissolution of Move Forward Party. If you can recall on the 6th March, in 2020, Mr. Tanaton and Mr. Pita were here after the dissolution of the Future Forward Party. And on that day, Mr. Tanaton told us that the dissolution of the Future Forward Party was not an end. It was just the beginning of this chapter two. But for me, I don't want uh, the next chapter to be happening. <laughs> I just want this is the chapter in of the junta or the coup d'etat in Thailand. Mr. Tanaton told us that no one can stop the win of change, the progressive movement of the people that we started five years ago. And the last year election result shows that his statement is still true. Our challenges in the next three years is regarding how we can win the majority seats in the parliament. I have to accept that this is not an easy task to do, but I believe, truly believe, it is possible to achieve. By doing that, we plan to expand our party membership in all areas across the country. Within this year, we will organize the open house event in our province uh, in Thailand. We plan to revise our all 300 policies uh, that Kun Silikanya may share to you that how we can improve our policy to be suitable uh, the people needs in the next election. Uh, furthermore, we are going to send the candidates in the local election, especially in the provincial level, that we have a good chance to win, uh, that we think that it is a good opportunity for us to deliver the policies to the people 
and to bring it into reality. This is like the strategic uh, movement for us uh, to gain more people's confidence that we can run the country in the future. Lastly, I will use uh, the short time for introduction and let you like the Q&A session. Uh, I am, uh, for personally talk, I have to accept that I think I'm not, despite I'm not uh, uh, deserved for Thai people as a prime minister, I believe in myself right now, but I truly believe that I can improve myself in the next three years. So we plan that I have to travel across the country within a year uh, for 77 provinces. So you can, if you can calculate that, meaning that in five days, in each, every five days, I have to go in one province to travel across the country within a year. This occasion will make me, will make me ready to be the next prime minister make me understand the people needs in local areas and help us to develop the policies that suit the people needs in, uh, in, the, uh, in the rural areas. So that is uh, our current plan and what is our movement. I can tell you that our main priorities, our main policies will be, sti will be sti uh, still the same. To protect the human rights, to bring the full democracy to Thailand, that will be and must be the same. We you keep continue on that. So uh, it is my sh very short introduction, <laughs> and we'll give back to you for the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you. Before we go to Q&A, I'm going to ask both of you, of course, Kuna uh, is joined by Kun Sri Kanya, who currently been elected deputy leader as well of the party, right? right? So before, before we go to q and I'm just going to ask a couple of questions, and then you guys can have the microphone. So I think one of the key questions is, you know, you, you mentioned the constitutional court um, decision, but both of you and 44 others, current and former members of your movement, is facing this, this, this ethics probe uh, by the NA, uh, National Anti-Corruption Commission. Um, do you have any comment on this ongoing threat that maybe 44 of you, including both of you, I think, could be banned for life, right? You, you, either of you share to, to comment on that? Uh, for the current situation about the 44 MP cases, uh, the NACC might uh, send the case to the su Supreme Court uh, in January, and we all will prepare for the cases. Um, not only that, uh, uh, for the internal uh, of our party, we prepare like uh, uh, the colleagues and our team to uh, continue our work uh, in all scenarios. What will happen to the 44 MPs, I truly believe that we can continue the movement of our party. Very well. You want to say something? Yes, of course. Um, for me, I'm, of course, one of the victims. And um, you, you see how ridiculous this case is. We are the member of the House of Representatives, so our duty is to pass the law. So um, as we endorse the, the law to amendment the Article 112 of the, um, criminal, court. the criminal Court, I don't think that it's um, considered a violation of ethics at all. But um, you know, in this country, anything it's possible and <laughs> it's totally unpredictable because they don't think in um, rational, logical sense. So um, we hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. We have our team, our, our legal team, uh, setting up uh, in order to um, fight for us against this case as all might. And um, of course, we might have faced um, a temporary um, um, temporarily um, banned from the, mm. from the, the parliament, but we don't think that uh, could, uh, you know, can stop us or uh, disrupt our work or our movement at all, because, you know, we can still work outside of the parliament as well. And uh, we have our, our duty to um, grooming our new 
the rest of the MPs who, you know, totally new, uh, have um, around one year of experience in the parliament to, to become um, even ready when, uh, when the worst scenarios has come. Second question for me is, of course, we've been closely watching the by-election in Pitsunulog. I think uh, Kun Teng just mentioned that your, your mission sort of is to contest in all the local elections. Now, we saw the result there went against expectation because you, you guys won in the general election, uh, but this time around, uh, sort of, you know, um, I guess uh, the, the other candidates uh, won the day. Do you have any comment on, on that particular uh, campaign? I mean, what did you notice? Why was the result came out that way? You know, if you see in the election result, uh, the percentage uh, who votes for the People's Party to the uh, to, to the turnout, it is uh, 45 percent, mm. which is higher than Kun Patipat uh, in the last uh, the his last election. Yeah. The, the former district MP who uh, removed from his position because of the dissolution of the Move Forward Party. So it means in that uh, the density of the, word, the of the votes. We, we, we have more density on the votes. But uh, there are many factors that may make me lose. I, I have to, I think I have to accept that uh, the, the people voice. So it, it is not like the, the, uh, the, the, the thing that we look into each factor and to, to claim that why we lose for each reason. I think it is, uh, we, we have to accept the people voice and have to like to learn how we can improve uh, that uh, our next election in the future. Okay, and um, a couple more questions before we go to the floor is um, in terms of policy priority, now we look at, at policy and what's going on in parliament. Many, um, you know, foreign media sometimes follow closely, sometimes not. Can you maybe outline some of these uh, policies that you guys are working on, maybe some of the things that are, that are your priorities? Of course, um, I think it's, uh, it's uh, my turn because I'm the deputy leader uh, responsible for the policy platform of the party. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we, I'm here to confirm that uh, all of the policy platforms that we placed uh, during the last election, the last generation, uh, still um, going on, still continue. And uh, our pi priority right now is um, try to perfect those policies just uh, to be ready for implementation in the, um, in the next, uh, actually, in the next uh, three years. So it's in 2027. So um, of course, there are some, uh, there are some policies that we have to um, continue to, to drive. Uh, even though we we are in the opposition, so we have all the laws that we um, trying to to push um, uh, to pass the parliament. Uh, for example, the next um, next week, I think our um, competition law amendment will enter uh, into the first reading of the parliament. That's um, guarantee our uh, principle that um, the monopolization in the country, the uh, economic concentration uh, should be um, handled within, the, um, uh, within the, the, the legal framework. That so we have to have the better set of um, competition law, for example. The liquor liberation policy that mm -hmm. we have um, campaigned for so long, like six years, yes. uh, have just been um, um, delayed uh, of the vote for the first reading, for example, but um, uh, we still have high hope for that, that uh, when it comes back, uh, we're gonna get it passed right again. And, um, and right now we think we have uh, made it uh, into the mainstream. Uh, every single party has um, proposed this um, quite kinda alike law trying to liberalize uh, liquor industry in Thailand for the sake of the, uh, the retailers, the small entrepreneurs. Mm. So um, that's um, how we're gonna continue our, our, uh, the whole policy and perfect it to, to, to make sure that it's ready for implementation in the next three years as we become the government. 
the last question for me before we go to the floor is something that I mentioned to both of you earlier. It's something that uh, some of the foreign media has been following, so I got um, requests uh, about this. This, this uh, There's an undercurrent through the, I guess, beyond the Piss in the Law campaign, but there's a current, un, you know, undercurrent about anti-Myanmar migrants, uh, especially online, uh, many raised by opponents of your party, let's just say, and sometimes zero in on some of your MPs. Um, do you have any comment on, on why this is happening, why suddenly the, the Myanmar migrant, you know, they've been in Thailand for such a long, such a, you know, an old issue. Why is it suddenly becoming a new thing? In an, I mean, do you or your party has any kind of thoughts on the, the issue? Thank you. May I? Because I'm, um, I'm kind of responsible for, for the debate that, that, that it happened. Uh, that one of our MP has speaking of this issue, particular issues um, uh, in the uh, in the agenda that uh, of the policy statement that uh, the, the, the for of the new government, and um, it surprised us too because it's not our first time uh, talk, uh, talking about Myanmar issues, and exactly the same uh, statement that we have in the parliament about uh, how we have to provide all the humanitarian aids for the refugees, um, especially for the public health, that um, at the end, if we, if we wouldn't uh, um, take care of, it's going to affect our own citizens, for example. Or the education issue, uh, it's very, um, it's a very surprise that the, the government has just accept um, um, the, to ratify the um, Article 22 of the um, the the, the uh, what's called the tr the rights of the child oh, um, yeah. treaty, right? And then we have the news. We heard the news that uh, they closed down the learning center in uh, Suratani for the uh, displaced Myanmar people. So we have um, to to talk about this in the parliament that uh, we didn't ask for um, uh, for something really huge. We asked for something very basic and very, um, um, at the least of the you know basic human rights, but um, still uh, they have, um, you know, have this is gone to become like, uh, like a spare back to us and, um, but, um, I have to make sure that uh, we will stand standing at the same um, stance and uh, we wouldn't change anything, even though we have to try to explain to lots of people, to our own supporters who don't agree with this, but we will try to make them to understand more about the issues, but not uh, going back or stepping back on this stance. Okay, I think I've asked enough questions. I would like to open the floor to uh, our members and so on. Please, there's a microphone uh, at the back there. Identify yourself, uh, direct your question to one or both of them, and also please limit the statement. More question. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Hi, thank you. This is uh, Sui Li Wee from the New York Times. Um, thank you very much for this. I wanted to ask about uh, the amendment of Article 112. Uh, Kun Natapong, you said it was, um, it's still on the, very much on the agenda, but the party would not be callous. Um, I was wondering whether you could expand on that. I mean, the Constitutional Court has clearly made it a red line, so how are you going to go forward with it? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, I believe that uh, we have to accept that the Article 112 is still have the serious problems in Thailand with uh, which uh, against like the civil rights in uh, in the country, but uh, it is uh, our priority to discuss inside the party that how we are going to. Uh, to, to do that uh, according to the constitutional court verdict. I think, um, for example, 
we 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 may not uh, propose them like in the campaign policy, but we just we we still do have uh, the rights to do in the parliament. According to the court verdict, uh, they said that it is if it is the uh, the normal legislative process or Niti Banyat Doi Shop in Thai, we, can, we, we still can do that. Mm -hmm. So I can guarantee you that if we accept that it is a problem that we have going to fix the, it in, in, in what ways that we can do. Thank you. Next, please. Hi, uh, name is Ian Hollingworth. I'm the Secretary of the uh, International Labour Network. Um, I want to go back to the uh, pit channel by-election that was mentioned previously. Now, on the one hand, you can quite legitimately claim, perhaps, that you are a new party, you haven't had time to bed in and uh, actually create your local links that are necessary to get you elected. On the other hand, uh, th there is a, a feeling in some quarters that you your party is little more than a Bangkok-based metropolitan elite. How would you respond to that charge? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, Bangkok-based metropolitan elite. Well, for, for this case, I, I don't think uh, it's just um, um, one um, by-election that we lost is going to um, have, um, you know, uh, dictate us that, that we are just, uh, of, uh, of course, our stronghold is in the urban area, but uh, we still can get uh, more and more of the uh, district MPs, especially in the um, uh, district one, which is uh, the most urban area in each provinces and uh, we know we have to do more to to win uh, the the peoples in the rural areas heart and uh, but uh, of course we are not just uh, bangkok best anymore we have um, almost um, 10 mps from the north and um, three mp uh, no six mps from the northeastern and uh, we have all, um, I'm on almost all of the MPs uh, from the eastern part. So uh, the fact that we won um, 32 seats out of 33 of the MPs in the Bangkok area, it doesn't mean that we are only the Bangkok based. One of the key um, issues that we really uh, you know, focus on is that we, ha we try to expand our um, network of supporters in every provinces. Is this thing that we have done for, you know, since Future Forward, and it's, uh, you know, growing and growing. And uh, if you see at the, the membership uh, of, of the party, of course, the majority is from Bangkok, but we see um, the proportion of people from the, the up countries more and more every day, especially uh, with our uh, People's Party member. It's, you know, it's uh, totally distinct from those from the Move Forward Party. We can draw uh, a lot of more, you know, brand new members who've never been um, any members of any political parties before. So it, it, it accounts um, around 20% of our uh, all memberships. So it means that we are expanding. We know our um, short for that we are not working um, as as um, you know as much to win uh, in the rural area. It's what we we trying to achieve. We and that's all in our plans in the next three years as well. So uh, make, to make sure that we are the party of uh, the people of Thailand, not just Bangkok. Thank you. Come on, guys, the mic is there. If people are still working out their question, um, I might go <laughs> one more for me. Um, constitution amendment, right? So this is a big issue, uh, changing the game. I mean, it looks like there's a lot of roadblocks along the way. There's been a lot of delays. What's your What's your view on this process? I know that the party always <laughs> talks about this issue, but what is, is it achievable? Are we going to have referendums soon? You know, can you tell us a little bit about this? Thank you. Oh. 
you know, for the constitution amendment, the, there are two main tracks to do that. The first one is to uh, amend the whole constitution. But if you look into the process uh, right now, uh, I believe that the government has delayed the process uh, many times, and there is a very little chance to do the whole cons uh, amendment before the next general election. By uh, it, it means that uh, if we cannot uh, do that in this tract, the next government will be under the current constitution, current, current distorted system. So we believe that the second tracks, the second option that we can do it is just uh, amend article by article. That we already propose many, many of the drafts to the parliament right now to fix many, many things uh, in the current constitution. For example, to limit the power of the independent bodies or the constitutional court uh, to meet the international standards. Uh, and many things that we going to uh, amend also is to protect the civil rights and to build the mechanism to prevent the next coup data to be happening again, and also to uh, like to remove the 20 year strategic plan th that is uh, stated, stated in the constitution. So these are the example that we are going to amend the constitution uh, using the, 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 the second tracks to do that. Thank you, Koya. Hello everyone, I'm um, Goya, a former economic journalist from Thailand. So, but now I'm still jobless because just coming back from the UK. By the way, I would like to ask Kun Sri Ganya about the monetary, monetary policy, especially the digital wallet that the government already gave the money to the people. Uh, so, as we know that um, this policy, some may think that is like a populist policy or something like that. Uh, what do you think about this policy and what do you think like the international media should know about policy or do you have any suggestion more about this policy thank you <laughs> for thai media they know that i'm a big fan of digital wallet <laughs> and i been uh, follow this very closely and um, of course they just um, um, uh, launched the new um, campaign about giving uh, cash handout for 10,000 10, baht each for uh, f those vulnerable groups who have very, um, um, very uh, small, uh, uh, have uh, uh, very poor and uh, who own the, um, the rights to, to the, you know, the welfare, the welfare card and those who are disabled. And um, so that's not the digital wallets that has been placed during the election campaign because this, there's nothing about the digital. They just keep uh, giving away the cash handout for about 14.5 million people. So if this is the stimulus package, I don't think it's, um, it's effective because um, um, if you see the result that they will stimulate the, 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 the economy, it will give only 0.35% of the GDP boost. So we, you know, we put a lot of money and uh, we gain very, very few. So it's not uh, quite a very effective way to stimulate the economy in the first place. But we can see this as um, the cost of living uh, alleviation measures as well, because we suffering from the cost of living um, for some time, but, uh, but the government has ran out of the options for the people. And, but if you look at uh, the amount of money that they, they give away, is 10,000 baht, which is like, um, uh, we can say like it's tripled at the time, uh, triple of the, the poverty lines of the peop of those people who who who, who get uh, who get the, the money, so it's a little bit too much to be <laughs> to be the cost of living alleviation plan. So this one is just um, it's just that they cannot uh, implement uh, the digital wallet scheme that they have placed because the legal issues. 
they cannot have the enough enough of money that they, they want to to pay out uh, because it's gonna you know stack up to um, 500 billion baht which is you know 16 uh, percent uh, of the total budget for example so um, this is um, kind of a big deal that um, uh, if we continue to do this, uh, it will give a lot of fiscal burden to, to the country, to the economy. Um, the, the debt to GDP ratio will shoot up um, to 70% of the GDP that is ceiling that we have right now for the fiscal discipline law. And uh, the interest burden will shoot up uh, more than 10% of the government revenue that is, you know, uh, that easily can see as um, the sign of downgrading of the credit rating agencies that they, they had have used for the investment grade um, sovereignty uh, credit ratings, for example. So this is, you know, it reflects that uh, when the government has become very short missed, they just want to um, stimulate the economy in a sh very short run. And it turns out that uh, it doesn't really uh, turns out well and they have to um, you know, po postpone and delay uh, the program, the, uh, this scheme for you know, more than a year now. And it, it doesn't, um, so it doesn't seem to be the short term, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the very emergency, the urgent uh, issues anymore about the stimula uh, stimulating the economy. Turns out that uh, just try to save their face, that uh, they have to commit to the policy they pledge, they have to do anything just to, to find um, the way to, to, give it, to give away this, this money. And even though it could hurt a lot to the economy and have um, very um, bad consequences afterwards. So this is, I think it's a very, you know, summary of <laughs> what's going on with this digital wallet. Jessica. Hi, good evening. Uh, Francesca Rodolado with Nikkei Asia. Um, just picking up on uh, the topic of the economy, um, can you explain what's in the competition bill and why it's going to be the first economy-related priority for People's Party? Um, and second, uh, I know you said that the focus is going to be on preparing the policies for the next three years, um, but the economy is in quite a bad situation at this moment. Um, so aside from the competition bill, what are you planning to do to make sure that your um, economic priorities are heard and given a fair hearing in the next three years? Of course, um, uh, the, the competition law that we have, uh, have seen that is, uh, there are some loopholes um, that uh, it's, you know, even though we have this competition law implemented effective for, um, I mean, six years already, five, seven years, but um, still, um, you know, and, and we believe at first that this one is, you know, way better than the, the last one that we have 20 years ago, that uh, we cannot, uh, you, know, you cannot, uh, you know, find someone to be guilty of anything for 20 years. So once we have this new competition law, we, we have high hope for it, for it that uh, we'll solve our um, you know, lack of competition problem in the country. But after, you know, four, five, six years of implementing uh, this law, we saw a big merging um, deal that has passed, uh, you know, the, the competition authority very easily. And um, one, it's in the case of the retail, um, um, retail market, that uh, the merging of the um, uh, CP and uh, Tesco, and uh, that's uh, you know that 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 was allowed by the competition authority, and the other one is the merging deal of True and DTAC, which is the the second and the third largest operator um, mobile operator in Thailand, and it's also it passed easily that they don't um, the law even allow them to merge without asking for permission from the the, the authority. So this is the loopholes because um, for the retail um, uh, retail market uh, merging, uh, they they subject to the competition law. 
but still, it still, um, still have the loophole that they allowed. The other, the True and DTAC uh, mobile operator merging deal, it's subject to another law by the um, NBTC, the National Broadcasting Television Commission. So um, what we try to do is to fix the competition law to become like the, um, the master of the, of the other laws that uh, regulating, uh, the, that the market regulates other, other sectors in the, in the country. So we you know, try to avoid that uh, we have you know, um, different laws and different practices about the competition, for example. We also um, try to fix the competition law to allow the, um, um, what's called, uh, leniency program, for example, that uh, is not allowed before, that uh, if, uh, if you have the cartel, and one of the, one of the member of the cartels has to you know, tell on each, uh, the others, so they have to, uh, to, have, uh, to get some way from the penalty, for example. So we try to, to, to fix the competition law to make sure that the, our legal framework is guarantee the level playing field uh, for, the, for the economy, for the, um, for, the, um, for the newcomer to have the level playing field competition with the, with the incumbents, for example. As we can see that the, our economy is very concentrated, so um, this one is, you know, uh, just very close to, to, to my heart. So I mentioned this first. And the second one is um, the economic priority. So it's the same thing. Uh, I mean, in our policy that we placed during the election, the last election, we mentioned about to find a new, new um, engine of growth because we see the lackluster of the uh, competitiveness of the country. And, but, but right now we have very immediate challenges from, um, we can say the China flooding, the Chinese goods that uh, flood into Thailand because uh, they can uh, produce uh, more and more and they expand their capacity and they can uh, flood uh, cheap, goods, uh, cheap goods into Thailand and that's uh, the big threat of the, of the, of the Thai economy that we already have the very poor competitiveness. So this is one of the campaign that we will launch next month that uh, we have to make sure three things. The first is to make sure the law enforcement works because I think this is the main uh, reason that um, we have the flux of uh, cheap Chinese goods that is not uh, compatible to, to the standards or um, regulation in Thailand and uh, second we have to make sure the level playing field all the taxes that Thai corporates have to pay uh, those uh, who want to um, do the business in Thailand they have to do the same and the third we might have to think about the strategic protection uh, that we have to put into some particular sectors that we have to figure it out uh, by consulting all the stakeholders. Of course, we don't want to become like the protectionism, um, a protectionist country, but uh, you know, if we just uh, uh, you know, believe in the free market and uh, you know, let uh, all the things uh, flux into our country, at, and the, at the end, our, our own entrepreneurs will die and uh, we, ha we have uh, nothing left for, it, for the economy. So that's an uh, immediate challenge that uh, we will continue from, um, from our policy. Hi, good evening both. Napat uh, Kongsawat from NHK. ดูคลิปจบแล้วอย่าลืมกดไลค์กดแชร์กดติดตามกดกระดิ่งให้ด้วยนะครับ